Ladies and gentlemen, good evening once again. My name is Eric Radke of Sporty's Pilot Shop. Thank you for joining us this evening on this, our first webinar uh, of 2013. Um, the free webinar series that's offered by Sporty's Pilot Shop was a program that we launched early in 2012, and it's been very popular thus far. We, we attempt to bring to you a variety of interesting uh, topics. Um, and we will invite you at the conclusion of this uh, webinar to even help participate in terms of uh, choosing some other topics that you might be interested in throughout the year. Um, it is absolutely free. We do provide a recorded archive version of this webinar and uh, all of our previous webinars of 2012 are all available on our website at sporties.com slash webinars. Um, on that same page, we do have our, our full schedule of 2013 presentations, and I'm sure you will find some uh, other topics that would be of interest to you, so I invite you to take a look and, um, and sign up for future presentations. Um, the space is limited, so the earlier you sign up for, the better. Um, and again, uh, just before we get started, I want to uh, thank everyone tonight and um, for, for joining us kind of a little bit late for everyone there on the East Coast. Um, and we're going to, uh, you know, explore the kind of ins and outs of earning an instrument rating. And I'm sure, I don't expect that I will be able to answer everyone's questions um, in the course of this presentation, but I do anticipate being able to leave some time at the end of the presentation to get to some more specific questions. Um, as an outline of uh, how we're going to progress this evening, um, we are going to um, talk some about um, why, what are the, some of the benefits of earning an instrument rating, and not only some of the why part, but uh, some of the um, considerations that, that maybe I'm, I'm thinking a lot of you may have not considered in terms of earning an instru instrument rating. We're going to talk about the, the process, uh, how one goes about earning the instrument rating, and also the basic requirements, which um, of course is pertinent to anyone who has yet to take that step. We're also going to take an in-depth look at the um, Sporty's Complete Instrument Rating video-based course, which um, is very timely in terms of us uh, selecting this topic as we uh, have made some substantial recent enhancements to the um, offering of our instrument rating course, including having just launched within the past week a dedicated app version for iOS. So for all of you uh, iPad and iPhone users out there, that may be of interest to you. So we'll talk um, in depth about um, how that course functions, how, how it can be used is a, is a great resource and a, um, an important tool in your quest for an instrument rating. And then we'll talk about some ins and outs of choosing a flight school and also a flight instructor. Um, and I should have mentioned at the very beginning, um, I, for Sporties, I serve as the chief instructor. I'm an airline transport pilot and a certified flight instructor for airplane as well as instrument. Um, and we do operate our own flight school at Sporties and do provide instrument training and work with um, about 130 clients at any given time. And we provide our courses of training in a variety of formats, including an accelerated format. Um, so we will be speaking from experience here and some of our um, guidance and advice and insight. Um, so there's that background, so you know where we're coming from there. We'll also talk about some tips and strategies, again, learned from experience uh, for manager, managing your train and setting in goals, short-term and long-term goals, and also some um, good study habits and time management techniques. And then, um, most important, um, beyond earning the instrument rating, what it's going to take in order to stay proficient. So that's what's on our agenda for tonight. Um, what I'd like to do to begin is, is ask for your participation, and we are going to launch a poll. And what we're asking here is um, your current interest. Um, just trying to get a feel for um, the audience structure there. Um, so you have some options there. Either you're considering, you're involved maybe in, the, in a training course, you perhaps have the rating, um, or you're looking to just get back into it. And I think a lot could... Um, a lot of people may be uh, may fall in that category there. It looks like the majority uh, of you this evening are um, considering an instrument rating. Um, but um, as, in a, as a close second, we have a lot that are involved in the process right now. So that's um, 
you know, I think um, there's a lot of good content in this presentation uh, for both. So um, stay tuned. I think we have a lot, uh, a lot of good insight to share. First of all, some of the whys uh, about earning an instrument rating. A, you know, the in terms of progressing uh, and moving up to that next certificate um, to get greater utility out of your uh, primary certificate, uh, a lot of you probably got into aviation because it was uh, a fun, um, a lot of obvious rewards. It's it's unique to say the least. There are only just over six hundred thousand pilots in the U.S. and only about half of those have instrument ratings. So it is a unique certification, uh, allows us to do a lot of things and go a lot of places and enjoy a lot of freedoms that others don't get to uh, experience. So it can be a lot, of, a lot of great rewards there and a good sense of accomplishment for um, tackling anything challenging um, with success. And of course, it's also a new adventure. You know, a common trait among all of us pilots is that we're adventuresome. Um, a lot of free spirits out there, and that certainly lends itself well to this instrument rating experience as well. So a lot of those same reasons why you got into aviation in the first place is certainly reason to continue um, your development as a pilot and continuing to enhance those skills, and an instrument rating can very much do that. Um, better utility from your certificate. Um, one thing I'll talk about in an upcoming slide is, is how you can take some hypothetical flights and determine what you might, may or may not have been able to do with an instrument rating. But an instrument rating, at face value, of course, it allows you to fly the aircraft solely by reference to instruments. So some of these days, um, for those of you who do not possess an instrument rating, that you're sitting on the ground waiting for a, a cloud deck to, to rise or nervous about uh, taking off toward an airport with some early morning fog um, because, you, uh, because you're not qualified to, to operate in the IFR system and, and operate an aircraft solely by reference to instruments. Um, this would give you not only the legal qualifications but also added confidence um, to, to take off on some of those flights that you may have not previously been able to do. Um, certainly nothing to be taken lightly because as, as we read about and are reminded about on a pretty regular basis um, for the VFR pilots out there that don't have um, complete instrument training and certificate in hand or even do and aren't seriously committed to maintaining that proficiency, that can be extremely hazardous to your health. Um, continued VFR flight and IMC um, continues to be at the top of the um, weather-related accidents, and, and certainly a, a large number of those, unfortunately, tragically, uh, end in fatality. So um, certainly a lot, of, a lot more utility, um, better proficiency, instrument training, and um, instrument flying in general uh, demands um, control of the aircraft, constant control, precision, finesse on the flight controls. And that can enhance every aspect of your flying, not, ju not just the instrument flight, but every aspect of your flying. Certainly added confidence, that kind of, um, um, that plays into all these other um, uh, reasons why you might, um, you know, embark on an instrument rating. It's going to give you added confidence because, you, again, we're, we talked about being able to uh, take flights, engage in flights that you may not otherwise ha have, have done. Added confidence in night flying when all those visual cues um, are not as obvious as they would be in daytime flying. And also just flying in, uh, even in visual conditions um, with limited visibility. I'm sure you know everyone that started out on your primary flight training track, um, the first time you experienced that three to five mile hazy visibility versus the you know, unlimited visibility, that can be a real eye opener. Um, so even these instrument skills can give you added confidence there. And then there's the safety aspect again, which, which plays in. And that's a result of having that added skill set, having the better, uh, the more experience, and then having that flexibility to operate in the instrument system if the conditions warrant. Some additional things to consider um, that maybe you had, maybe some of these you have, but I would, uh, what I hope to impress upon you, are the additional responsibilities that come with an instrument rating. Um, you know, having an instrument rating alone certainly doesn't um, make us immune to some of those risks inherent in, in any type of flight. We mentioned the um, particularly hazardous continued VFR flight in an IMC condition. So I would urge anyone contemplating uh, the instrument rating to consider some of those additional risks 
and then ask yourself whether or not you're ready to uh, take on that added responsibility. Because um, there can be two different goals in earning an instrument rating. This could have even been a different poll question, though I don't have it uh, queued up and ready to go. But you have to consider what your ultimate goals are. For some of you out there, and this is there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this type of goal setting, and we work with clients that have this goal, but the goal could just be to earn the instrument rating. You may not have obvious or specific plans to do a lot of IFR flying, or instrument flying. Some of your motivation could be some of those other factors we mentioned. It could be confidence. It could just be that new challenge and adventure, you know, one of those on kind of your aviation life to-do to -do lists. So your approach to the instrument rating could be a little bit different. For those of you who are looking to do more and kind of go beyond that check ride and be active in instrument flyers, what you need and have to be uh, committed to, and this is in the interest of your own safety, is maintaining the, that IFR discipline and maintaining those that proficiency um, that is going to allow you to operate safely in that environment. Consider the fact that with an instrument rating, that's going to allow you to to examine weather, to um, receive weather reports and forecasts, to make your own analysis, um, to analyze possible icing conditions, um, to analyze whether you know alternates that could be available in the in the um, in the event that an airport that you're intending to use has low enough visibility that you're not able to make it in, and you're doing all this in the same environment as perhaps you know higher turboprop, higher performance turboprop, or even, um, you know, airliners to corporate jet aircraft that are operating with, you know, two crew uh, professional pilots that do this on a day-in and day-out basis. So while you might not have that same luxury to be able to, you know, practice your craft day-in and day-out and then even have the benefit of a non-flying pilot next to you, you're going to be expected to operate with that same level of precision and accuracy and also, clearly for your own benefit, um, you know, operate, um, operate with those same wise decision-making and risk assessment type skills. So there's a lot more to it than just earning the instrument rating. So that's certainly some things I would, uh, would hope to impress upon you that you should consider before, um, you know, involving yourself in a course of training that will result in an instrument uh, rating. I mentioned some of the hypothetical flights before. Something else you can do that takes a little effort. Um, if you're if you have the pilot certificate in hand, a private pilot certificate in hand, and you're considering moving on, um, start taking a look uh, from day to day at your home airport at the day's weather conditions, and set yourself up some hypothetical flights to maybe some destinations that you either go to on a regular basis or you would hope to go to on a regular basis, and start keeping a tally or tabs on whether or not that instrument rating you know, how that would have assisted you, how that would have affected your go or no-go decisions. And again, that doesn't necessarily just mean because it's less than VFR weather minimums out there. Think about just the possibility of darkness or you're just your confidence level in interacting with ATC. How much flying do you think or how much more additional flying would you have done with an instrument rating? And that can, that can tell you a lot about the flying you do and whether or not this is uh, going to be, you know, worth that commitment and investment. Um, because operating in that system, because of all those factors, it certainly does um, demand a, a critical thinking skills and an active um, thinker and one who's committed to continue to develop as an instrument pilot. And um, one other um, point of consideration, and I, I added this kind of last minute because this is something that has been in the kind of mainstream aviation media lately, and that was that the FAA issued recently. Uh, a special alert for flight operators that talks about um, the potential for degradation in pilot skills. And this is really focused and written for a slant towards those who are operating IFR and even in the professional transport category class. But it has some applications in the GA um, environment and GA community as well. But over-reliance on that autopilot and those lack of kind of manual flying skills and how that can degrade skills. So um, one thing I'll add to the mix and things to consider is that um, that's just one other aspect, that despite perhaps some of those long um, instrument in the IFR system cross-country flights that could involve a lot of autopilot on time if you're flying with an autopilot, um, 
that's another level of proficiency that you have to make sure that you're addressing, that you're getting enough of the hands-on manual flying um, skills. And a lot of that will come, I think, in just maintaining the discipline to hand fly the airplane when conditions warrant. And that probably doesn't mean when you're having to fly uh, an approach down to fairly low visibility limits on the back end of a long flight where there's some fatigue setting in. That's not the time to be rehearsing manual flying skills. The time to be rehearsing your manual flying skills is during good weather conditions or perhaps when you have a safety pilot um, in the right seat as well. Uh, that's the time to be working on those type skills. Moving on to the basic requirements that everyone is subject to for an instrument rating, I direct you to FAR 6165, which does specify that you hold a, possess at least a private pilot certificate. Of course, be able to read, speak, and understand the universal aviation uh, language, which is English. You have to receive and log ground training on the specific aeronautical knowledge areas that are outlined in the same FAR. Um, that can be done one-on-one -on -one with a certified flight instructor instrument or via a home study course. We're going to talk a little more, more about that in, in a moment. You do have to receive an endorsement for, to take both the knowledge test and also to take the practical test. And you do also, in addition to receiving ground training in the knowledge areas, you do have to receive flight training um, in the areas of operation specifically that are outlined in this part, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And just like your initial pilot cert certificate, you do need to pass both a written component and a flight test. Aeronautical knowledge areas can include the FARs related to instrument flight, flying under instrument conditions and in the IFR system, interacting with air traffic control and understanding the various systems and procedures. We're adding a lot more uh, to the mix there than what you would have received in your primary flight training. IFR navigation with a variety of systems. Uh, every navigation system that's available in the aircraft that you may use for your flight test, you're going to be expected to be knowledgeable about. And for the written test, even those that might, where your aircraft might not be equipped with. Like what comes to mind nowadays is that, uh, especially if you're, um, if you're in the new aircraft market or purchased an aircraft in the, in the last five to ten years, really, you probably know that it's almost impossible to find an aircraft equipped with an ADF. Um, but you're still going to be expected to know and ask questions like that on the written examination. You're going to be expected to know about uh, en route um, IFR charts as well as terminal procedure publications or better known as approach charts. Aviation weather, uh, both the you know acquiring aviation weather information and also the analysis. Um, aviation weather and all flying go hand in hand, but even more so in the instrument environment when you're making, um, I guess, more accurate assessments of, of additional variables that you may not have considered in the visual type flying. Could be you know cloud layers, could be temperature and icing conditions, could be turbulence. Um, mountain obscurations, that's such, that such things. Um, decision making and judgment, of course, and then crew resource management is an area of emphasis that the FAA has, um, has made recently via the uh, current practical test standards. A little more about the written examination. The written examination, both at the, the primary level and even more so probably at the instrument level, is, is always been um, uh, a hurdle, um, a source of some trepidation, I guess, by a lot of pilots that are training to become instrument-rated pilots. Um, the basics, the kind of mechanic, mechanical piece is that it is a 60-question multiple-choice test, same format as you would have taken um, in a primary written test where you have your question and your three answer choices. Some questions may um, reference images or diagrams or charts, etc., just like at, at the primary level. Um, just to let you, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, I will make a point now while we're talking specifically about the written, to let you know that written test questions that are that are on the, your examination, they are no longer in the public domain. There's some a lot of misinformation out there, and I think some misunderstanding uh, about what you have access to. Um, the FAA reversed their policy about 10 years ago in terms of questions being available in the public domain. 
they do make sample test questions available via the website. You can actually just search FAA Airman Testing Standards and you can you can get very quickly to some sample test questions. A little more than 10 years ago at one point and then that prior to that going back many many years all of the questions that you may see on any of the written tests were available in the public domain. So some of the third party um, courseware providers and test prep providers they do have a large number of representative test questions and the reason they have those is because they retrieve that type of information and data when all the questions were available in the public domain but they're not any longer. So my point in saying this is um, no one source of preparatory material is is a complete preparation package. Um, you have to look at kind of a written testing component is just one piece in that in that total arsenal of resources that you can do um, to complete the instrument rating. Um, you know, the long ago, I think uh, you know many pilots got in this habit that they would just simply turn to these, um, you know, again, kind of written test prep providers or you know third-party flight training providers and then get the written over with and then go really learn how to work in the instrument system. Now sadly, um, that's not all that, that responsibility in, in, in the kind of the shift that direction is not necessarily all the fault of the applicant. Um, because of a variety of reasons, budget constraints being one, there has, and I will be the first to admit and point out, there is more of a disconnect right now than I think ever before in how the FAA goes about testing your aeronautical knowledge in the written test form versus how you actually fly instruments. And some of that is as obvious as test questions referencing outdated or stale material, um, old instrument approach chart forms, um, questions that lead you to believe that um, certain levels of interpolation are, are safe and effective when they're really not, um, th those type questions. So because of some of those limitations and because of some of that disconnect, um, it is important, while I pointed out just before, it's important not to use one of those resources as a standalone guidance. I think it is important to have that as part of your, your preparation because it, it is wise um, to see exactly how the FAA is going to ask, you know, certain things and and the formats they typically use, and especially to get a sampling of some of the questions. Um, again, that um, you know the correct responses you you may not simply find in some of the you know main publication or, or video based resources that are out there. So the test prep um, component is, is very important. You do have two and a half hours to complete the written test. Um, and, you know, again, I point out how the written test has always been seen as, as kind of a stumbling point or a hurdle. Um, not to scare anyone away from this, but I will point out that there were about 12,000 of these tests given out in 2011. That's the last year that data is available. And the average um, score on the test was 79% with a pass rate of 83%. Now, to put that in some perspective, for the private pilot, uh, airplane test, there the pass rate is in about the 93% level, and the average scores in the upper 80. So, it's um, you know a significant drop. Uh, even though these are these are good pass rates and these are good average scores, it's a significant drop from where it was at the at the private pilot level. So it does take some some good preparation. Flight proficiency. Now, this is getting into the 61, uh, 65 regulatory requirements for the areas in which you have to receive flight training from an instrument instructor. Uh, we're specifically tasked with um, working on pre-flight preparation and procedures, uh, air traffic control clearances and procedures, actual nav you know flying the airplane by reference to the instruments. That's the foundation for everything else you will do in the IFR system. Um, using all available navigation systems instrument approach procedures in the terminal environment, of course, emergency operations and post-flight procedures. The aeronautical experience requirements, and I have the Part 61 up there in parentheses because as you'll see in just a moment, there is a substantial difference between the aeronautical experience requirements under Part 61 versus Part 141. Under Part 61, 
and this is the area, this very first 50 hours of cross-country flight time, this is generally what takes the most amount of time for someone having just earned um, a primary certificate. Um, that will take some time to build up that 55 hours of, of cross-country. Um, Ten of that does have to be um, in, in the airplane towards the instrument rating. You do have to have 40 hours total um, under instrument or simulated instrument conditions. I'll come back to this a little bit later as well, but I point out simulated because it is conceivable um, that one could go earn an instrument rating have, having never actually flown under real instrument conditions, meaning in the clouds with literally no um, outside visual reference. Because the regulations and, and the training um, allow you to use a view limiting device um, in order to you know, simulate instrument conditions, and you will simulate instrument conditions on the flight test. Those are not conducted under real instrument conditions. Um, and I'll point, you know, point that out. Philosophy surrounding that, I think, should be a factor in, in how you go about choosing a flight instructor and also a flight school, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Fifteen hours of that uh, instrument time does have to be from an instrument instructor, and like all um, endorsements for the practical test, three hours of training within two calendar months in preparation for the test. does also only require one instrument cross-country flight um, under IFR with an IFR flight plan filed, 250 miles of total length, and involve an instrument approach at each airport, and then also three different kinds of instrument approaches. So it's very minimal. Um, as you can see, kind of from based on the minimum experience, um, this is about the, you can expect to take about the same amount of time, cross-country flying aside, as you may, um, as you probably did for, the, uh, for your primary flight training. Now, if you train at a particular flight school under Part 141, and in terms of the differences, you know, I don't really intend to get in a big discussion about the difference between Part 141 and Part 61, um, but for the purposes of this presentation, I'll say that the Part 141 regulations, that requires that a flight school has an operating certificate that's issued by the FAA. And in order for a flight school to be issued an operating certificate under Part 141, all of their curriculum and aircraft and briefing areas and instructors, that's all monitored and approved um, by the FAA. So it's, it's much more involved and has much more oversight rather than Part 61. So any flight instructor, any instrument instructor can always provide instruction under the basic Part 61 regulations. But in order to be able to deliver training under Part 141, you have to have approval to do so by the FAA, approval and oversight. And that's something you have to continually get renewed. So that's a constant check and constant oversight by the FAA. And, the FA, and those FARs in Part 141 also are very detailed about the type of experience and, and how syllabi are created and how curriculum is delivered. And because of that, because of that more regimented environment, the regulations allow for less total experience uh, for one to earn an instrument rating. As you can see here, the most obvious piece that's missing under Part 141 is that 50-hour cross-country requirement is not there. So I know for a lot of individuals, and I'm sure there are some on this webinar, for those who are looking to do um, maybe more of that career track, um, you know, move very quickly through your certificates and ratings, perhaps all the way up through commercial pilot, this is very desirable here because it doesn't mean that you have to build up that 50 hours of cross-country flying before you earn um, the instrument rating. But for, uh, for training under 61, of course, it does. So there's no minimum uh, PIC cross-country. It does require that same single cross-country flight that we just talked about. It does also require 30 hours of ground training, and this is all, um, all that training is part of the approved syllabus, so all that has oversight. It does allow for the use of uh, simulators and flight training devices, um, as you would also have under Part 61. Um, shifting topics a little bit, a little more about how... Um, you know, sporties can help. And while our discussion here in terms of the home study course will be focused on the offering from sporties, there are other products out there. Um, but the home study course is certainly something that, especially in this modern age, um, when everyone um, everyone's 
time, I guess it's it's the the competition for your time is very fierce. Um, a lot, everyone has a lot of responsibilities and other activities that you're participating in. And I think more and more, and I'll group myself into the same category, we're looking for something a little more personal. Um, we're looking for something a little more custom, something that speaks to you and is indicative of how you like to learn. Um, and for many, many years, kind of the establishment in, in not just flight training but all of education was more that, you know, we will tell you and we will show you best how you learn. Um, and we've, in terms of like the home study course products, we've gotten away from that. We've gotten uh, more in tune and more in line with the you know best, the consumer knows best, the student knows best, um, how they wish to get the information and receive the information. So while, of course, we're bound by all of the regulatory guidance and requirements for an instrument rating, a home study course can allow you to pick and choose. It can allow you to move at your own pace. It can allow you to view and then review material over and over and over again. Um, for courses that have different components, like the one we're going to talk about here, you can pick and choose when you bring in those various components. Um, and then set aside time, day, night, weekend, over lunch, etc., where you can always stay involved and stay engaged. And um, you can kind of, again, use your actual flight instructor either as part of this process um, so that, you know, occasionally when concepts do come up that you need, you know, additional guidance on or assistance with, you can go to that um, instrument flight instructor. Or another strategy, which is very popular, is that you, you know, complete an entire video-based course on your own and even maybe complete the written examination before you even engage a flight instructor instrument, at which time then you're focused in on, ex on what you're going to do in the airplane and you've already gotten through that hurdle of the, uh, of the instrument written. So moving into the Sporties course, um, just a little bit about our background. The Sporties organization has been in aviation education for more than 50 years now, going all the way back to 1961. And our founder and chairman, Hal Shevers, uh, still to this day is a certified flight instructor instrument. And he started the Sporties organization by um, providing instrument training to pilots who own their own aircraft. That was the niche of the market that he had carved out. That later turned into him kind of pioneering this concept um, which first started in our, at our headquarters, which is in Cincinnati, Ohio. And that was working with individuals in kind of an accelerated all-day weekend-type format. It's actually where the term weekend ground school came from. To teach them exactly what they needed to know from an aeronautical knowledge perspective to earn that instrument rating. So our roots are very much in that, uh, in that instrument training, and that is something we've been involved with and doing um, for more than 50 years now. We are, you know, we have a, a host of instrument instructors on staff. That's who works in our curriculum and works with our courseware, our laboratory, our studio. It's actually the flight school. Um, it's, not, it's not in a studio somewhere. It's not in front of a green screen. It's actually on an airport with a fleet of aircraft, with a fleet of clients and customers, um, that are doing and participating in instrument training. Um, so a lot of what we're going to talk about and a lot of what we have to offer, again, is based on that experience and us actually doing um, exactly this and experiencing a lot of good success with it. And then, you know, tweaking our offerings and material um, when it's necessary. Some of the advantages, as I just pointed out, you can, you can customization, it's all about personalization and customization. You can move at your own pace, you can view and re review material, um, you can effectively prepare for lessons because we'll show you exactly how um, with an integrated training course outline that bridges that home study with what you'll do in the actual airplane. Um, you can earn that endorsement ahead of time for that written examination and, 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 and cross that hurdle before you even start working with an instructor. Um, obvious, if you choose that route, there's a lot of uh, cost savings that can be gained there. And we'll also ensure from a regulatory standpoint that you've met all those requirements that we outlined earlier. And again, it's all about that personalization. You can pick and choose which components you use and how you use the course. Some of the added features that we do um, have, um, we do offer a triple guarantee if you use the Sporties video-based instrument rating course. You're guaranteed to pass the written, oral, and practical examinations or your money back. 
all of our video as we don't have studio as, uh, studios as I mentioned our studio is the airport and in and around airplanes um, that is all shot in and around uh, airplanes we have uh, a host a full complement of graphics and 3D animations to help with the more difficult concepts unique to the sporties offering we do have air fact segments with the legendary Richard Collins which again this these are segments that kind of go outside the practical st test standards and go beyond what you need to know for the practical test and the written test and focuses on actually flying IFR going beyond the license we do offer the written test endorsement when you meet the minimum parameters we include a practical test standards study guide the practical test standards being that guidance um, of what the FAA will will provides uh, the guidelines they go by in order to issue the instrument rating. We have an integrated training course outline which is your flight syllabus that bridges what you would do in the home study environment with what you would do in the actual airplane. This is an FAA WINGS accepted course and curriculum so for those of you participating in the WINGS program you can earn credit automatically with a WINGS account through the course and we now just recently very happy to say I have it available in three formats, the first to do so, DVD, online streaming, and now a dedicated app version. Our DVD product uh, features over 13 hours of video, as do the other formats. Um, and the DVD format, that comes on seven discs. Perfect for those of you who want to lounge kind of in the living room or with your laptop on your lap, doesn't matter, PC or Mac. Uh, it's DVD, so it will play on either. Uh, perfect for the TV, though, in the living room. Um, it does feature an interactive online test prep program in addition to a standalone test prep program. So the interactive online test prep is unique to the DVD version, and that is at the end of each segment, you will be asked a series of review questions um, that you can answer on the actual television or on your computer monitor. It does come then also with an online PTS study guide in PDF format and a flight training syllabus, and you do get the WINGS credit as with all of them. The online version uh, works anywhere you have a web browser. It is online streaming con content, so you do, limitation being, you do have to have an internet connection. Um, our online offering is provided in an HTML format, so it's compatible with mobile devices as well. Uh, we're the first to be delivering in that type of format. Um, and it will work with moderate internet speeds. It is compatible with Windows, Mac, and as I mentioned, iPad as well. Um, if you're on Internet Explorer, it does require the very latest Internet Explorer 10 in order to work. And there again, there is no software. This is all online content. So all of your progress tracking, all of your test history, that's all stored in the cloud. Um, so there's nothing you have to install on your computer. There's nothing you have to worry about saving. Simply log in, log out. Whenever you log in, you're going to be right there where you left off. Um, and one great benefit of the online version versus the DVD version is um, once we have data loaded on a DVD, there's no specific way to up that and update that information. So if you buy the DVD version, you're getting a great product and some added features. But once you buy it, it has a shelf life. Whereas with the online, because the content is all housed in the, in the cloud, every time you log in, you're getting our most up-to-date information. Um, so you can be confident that you're getting the very latest material every time you log into your course. Then our latest um, dedicated app version, custom designed for the iPad and iPhone. It is a universal app, so you can use it uh, both on an iPhone and an iPad, for those of you on the go. Includes everything in the DVD and the online, including an interactive maneuvers guide. Both the online and the dedicated app version have what we call our interactive maneuvers guide. And what that is, is that is all your required maneuvers for the instrument rating are broken out in a separate segment, a separate module. And you can review those individual maneuvers so you can rehearse and know exactly how you're going to perform those. We describe the maneuver in both a text format and then we also show you that maneuver in a 3D animation. Again, great preparation for that in airplane flying. The dedicated app version also allows you, it allows you to stream just like the online streaming version, but we also have a video, we have a video segment um, saving feature so that you can actually save segments directly to your device 
And that way, if you're on an airline flight or somewhere else where you don't have internet access, you can view any of the saved video segments. And the entire, all the video segments only take about, uh, take up about six gigabytes of space. So for a lot of you, you may choose to download all the video segments and have access to them anywhere. Each one of these formats is available at the lowest price we've ever had this product offered at right now. It's, uh, it is on sale for $199, normally $265. So again, in terms of your investment there, I certainly firmly believe and have seen time and time again, you will save that amount of money time, many times over um, by the preparation that you're able to do ahead of time with the video course. This is a look at the online streaming version, the, the video training module. Um, as you can see on the left side of the screen, this is kind of your um, local local navigation, uh, if you will. I'm going to use my spotlight tool here to, to show you what I'm talking about. This is kind of the table of contents in this area here. So each of the volumes is located in this kind of local navigation area of the course. And as you proceed through video segments, we do we do at least for your initial training, do recommend that you go start to finish and you progress in the order here. Now as you um, start flying in the airplane and start doing more with an individual instructor, um, there will be times when you will come back and you'll want to pinpoint information and go immediately to one particular segment or one particular area, but at least at your initial um, you know, course engagement, we do recommend going uh, start to finish. And as you complete each one of these segments, you'll see there's a green check mark indicating that that's been completed, so you can return to exactly where you had left off, and it gives you an estimate on run times. Your global navigation is all located across the top here. Uh, a home page will return you to the course home, home screen, home menu. The various section pull-down menus will quickly allow you to access the various modules of the course. We have a progress reports feature which will give you a quick breakdown of your video training completion and also any of your written test uh, history. If you need to either share that or show that with an instructor or just get for your own um, personal knowledge a quick snapshot of, of your progress so far. We also have a notes feature which again, if you're working with an instructor, this is particularly helpful because what you can do is you can open up your saved notes and then you can type in questions or make any other notations that you wish to get uh, clarification on later. And then we have access there to the um, uh, help document. Our written test prep mode, a uh, very popular feature and probably the, the mode or module I would expect that you would use most often second from the video training. Um, this is your dedicated test prep platform right here. So this is the mode that actually allows you to earn the, the written exam endorsement directly from the course. Um, we have three modes of operation, a learning mode, a flashcard mode, and testing mode, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Um, we also have, include in our courseware, um, we always try to keep the users uh, informed and up to date with exactly how the FAA, what type of movements or emphasis areas that, that may be going on in written testing. And right now, as you can see with my highlighter, the FAA is putting um, strong emphasis on icing information. So we've provided here some supplemental information on aircraft icing. We've also just recently updated one of our primary course volumes to include uh, expanded information on flying and icing conditions. Um, so that's all information you can see here. And we, this is updated as is needed. So anytime you're uh, returning, you'll be able to uh, see if there are any additional areas of emphasis that you may need to look at. This is the table of contents for the learning mode, once again in the written test prep module for the instrument course. Um, this is the menu you would see after selecting that learning mode. And what learning mode allows you to do is either select a random mix of questions at the very bottom of the screen. You can see um, your options are to select 25, 50, 100, or 200, just random questions out of our entire database of sample test questions. Or um, for a more directed or more focused study session, you can select individual topic areas that you wish to study. Um, you can either go through these topic by topic 
you know, for a little bit better plan or more systematic approach. Or again, um, self-identify areas that you need additional assistance with um, and then, you know, create learning modules or modes from, from those individual topics. Once you've selected a topic or a specific random mix of questions, this is what your learning mode will look like here. Um, what you have the ability to do here is get instant feedback. Uh, when you're progressing through these questions. So when you select an answer, it's going to immediately tell you in red whether that answer is incorrect or in green whether it's correct. And then, most importantly, we're going to give you a detailed explanation as to why that information is correct and incorrect. And that's the key feature here, in my opinion, that makes this a, a really valuable learning tool. Um, we shouldn't be shy about focusing on these specific test questions. Again, if it's important enough to ask on a written test, it's important enough to, to talk about directly. So that's our goal and focus here in this um, written test preparation module. Um, you can also have the ability here just to show the answer. Um, that is an option here, even without specifically selecting a question, if you just wanted to focus on reading the explanations um, to each of these questions. The test mode, um, we started out in learning, as you remember, back from the three modes of operation. We had a learning mode uh, option, we had a test mode option, and we had a flashcard mode option. So this is how the testing mode option looks. So it looks the exact same, except when you select an answer here, you're not going to be given the explanation. You're going to have to wait till you complete the entire session and then grade the test. Um, we do have a timer function in here because, as you remember, um, the instrument written exam does only allow two hours and 30 minutes, and it is 60 questions. So our test mode simulates an actual written exam. It, it pulls a random mix of questions out of our data, extensive database of test questions. Um, and gives you the environment just like you're going to see on the written test. You can mark questions and refer back to them later just like you can on the real exam. And then once you grade the test, we also have a helpful feature that it will, that it will offer you at the end if you've missed any questions. I know that's a big if, but if you've missed any questions, you can then create a study session just from those missed questions. So you can focus on only, the, only that information that you've missed. And then you can even review, even ahead of that, you can just review the questions that you've missed. In the flashcard mode, again, this is a unique feature um, specific to the Sporties product. This allows you to look at these same test questions, same test questions that you would have been presented in either learning mode or test mode, but as you can see, you don't get answer choices. So just like a flashcard environment, you simply read the question and then you provide the answer mentally. And then once you've provided yourself with an answer, you can click the show answer button and then it will display just like that, that uh, the correct answer on the screen. And then it's up to you um, to mark that question whether you got it correct or whether you got it incorrect. So you can you know, choose, to be, choose to be as fair and honest here as you would like. Um, I look at the flashcard mode as really you know, refining and, and, and honing the, the preparation as you get closer and closer to taking the exam. My recommendation would be to start in the learning mode environment. Um, either with random mix of questions or if you've already identified certain areas that you need additional assistant w assistance with, focus on those areas. Then graduate towards test mode and then flashcard mode can further be, um, be used to support um, the areas requiring additional study that you've identified from both learning and test mode. This is a look at the progress reports tab from the global navigation um, screen, as you can see, this gives you, now in this particular example and user, this user is accessing multiple courses, not just instrument. But this tells you exactly um, what you've taken, what test, when, time to complete a test, correct answers, total questions, and then the score. So if you're working with an instructor and need to report back or just, you know, look at some quick guidance for your for your own personal benefit of your progress, this is a great way to do it. You can delete any of this history that you don't wish to save in here as well um, by just using those delete um, X tabs at the far left of the screen. Our interactive maneuvers guide again, this is a sample of what that looks like. Um, this maneuver would be the instrument takeoff. So again, this gives you the description of how the uh, maneuver is to perform. And I can't, uh, I can't emphasize enough 
what a benefit this is. And this is, again, from personal experience in working with individuals in the instrument rating to be able to go into a flight having rehearsed this information ahead of time and having a specific procedure and normal flow and a standard way of performing the maneuver over and over again the exact same way. That will ensure that come check ride time, come evaluation time, you're going to do it accurately. You're going to do it going to do it correctly. It's about rep repetition, muscle memory. Um, very powerful tool. So in addition to the text description, um, up just under the instrument takeoff tab, that's actually the uh, animation that's available. And if you click the tab, you're going to get our video viewer that pops up. And this is going to take you through, again, a detailed animation of exactly what that instrument takeoff looks like. Great prep, probably not a tool um, that you would use during your you know, basic video training or even uh, instrument written test preparation. But once you're working in the flight training syllabus and working with an instructor and you know looking ahead at the syllabus that you have these maneuvers you're going to be um, uh, accomplishing, it's a great preparation tool. Other components that you do get, um, we are going to uh, offer the training course outline or flight training syllabus, um, as I mentioned, which is your bridge between your at-home study and what you'll do in the airplane. Uh, interactive practical test standards, um, that's the FAA you know, doctrine, the guidance that's used to evaluate um, your skills on the instrument rating test. So that is a document you do want to be very familiar with. It's important to have an updated copy. We provide that in here. Not only do we provide the, the PTS, but the interactive piece comes in the fact that for each of the elements in the practical test standards, we cross-reference that back to the video training material. So that while you're reviewing the instrument rating practical test standards, if you wish to jump directly into the video training course and review that material and review that information, a good, a very powerful preparation as it gets closer and closer to the practical exam, you can do that with that resource. The study guide is some supplemental information, some written information, and then you have um, from this home page for the online course the written exam endorsement option uh, and the FAA WINGS credit option. That's all done automatically and you're eligible for both of those when you've completed all of the video training and also completed two practice tests with a minimum score of 80%. Um, in the app format, that's also available, as I mentioned before, for the 199, just like the uh, DVD and online format includes everything that you would get with DVD and online and allows you to save video segments for offline viewing. And that's specific for those of you who are on the iOS devices. This is a preview of what it will look like. Um, as you can see on the far left, similar to the online course, your local navigation is going to be on the far left, and that far left menu right here allows you to access any of those components. Your video training menu, as you can see on the far right of your screen, that is your download manager. So in the normal course, if you were connected to the Internet, you would use the play video icon um, on the left side of those individual topics. Um, and that would allow you to stream the video. If you were looking to save video segments, you would leave, use the download button, and that would save that video segment to your device for the offline viewing. And that's a look at what the download manager looks like, so you know exactly what segments you have saved, and you can even monitor the progress of those downloads. Here's a look at the um, written test preparation. Um, it's very similar to the uh, online. Just giving you a quick um, preview of how that looks. This is a look at the um, instrument uh, practical test standards portion of the um, app format. This allows you, as you can see, those video icons on the far right allow you to jump immediately uh, into the video training course um, to where that information is found. This is a look at the training course outline, which is available directly in the online and app format courses. For your DVD course, we provide, um, we give you directions on how you can download those as PDFs. Our training course outline is what we use in our own flight school. Um, it is FAA Part 141 approved. Um, it comes com complete, as you can see, with objectives, individual topics that are to be introduced and then completion standards and also even a required study um, 
feature which will allow you again to do some in-depth preparation for the tasks that you have coming up. Okay, moving on to um, some things to consider, some things to think about um, as you are looking for a uh, flight school, and we'll move on to flight instructor. Um, I like to say that um, my advice is to, when you're seeking out, you know, an organization to do business with and make this type of investment and um, make this very serious commitment to instrument flight, you want to seek out stability. You want to seek out an established member of the community. Um, someone with a good reputation. Really, when you think about anything in life, you know, you do, whether you go see a doctor or whether uh, there's a particular um, uh, grocery store you like or jewelry store or, or, or name, whatever it is, whoever you interact with on a regular basis. You know, a lot of those same aspects in evaluation, even if it's at a subconscious level you go through, also apply to flight training. You want to feel safe. You want to feel um, like there's good value for what you're going to be investing in. Um, you want to ensure, you know, specifically related to flight training, you want to know going in that um, there's a realis realistic expectation that you're going to be successful. Um, and that should be able to be articulated by that flight school. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the... Um, interesting aspects of the regulations governing instrument training is it doesn't technically require that you have any actual instrument flying. And there are numerous, hundreds, if not thousands of instrument pilots out there that have never actually flown under instrument conditions. Um, that's, you know, I, I'm not saying that one is necessarily better than the other. I'll, I'll let you make your own judgment. I can say at our flight school we very much believe in getting actual instrument experience. Um, because quite frankly, I don't think it can be, I don't, I have yet to see a view limiting device out there that gives you that same instrument experience as the actual conditions. Um, so I think um, part of that evaluation, no, no matter how you lean, um, what, what you, no matter how your preference is, should certainly be to find out what the belief is. Uh, you could find flight schools and flight instructors that simply don't believe in the actual instrument conditions and you're going to be doing all your training under uh, simulated conditions, but that's something that's better known ahead of time. There also should be a clear management structure in place. There should be, a, you know, people should be accountable. Um, there should be any, any organization like that that has a management structure is going to be more likely to have a set syllabus so that there's always a plan of action. Um, it's going to be more likely to have support material and a support network um, in, a, in a good, stable, um, supportive environment. In looking for a flight instructor, um, you know, again, a lot of this is about instincts and about feel. What feels right, uh, what feels comfortable. Um, of course, with this type of investment, you expect um, that individual on the uh, other side delivering instruction to give you 100% of their attention and effort and focus. Um, you know, similar to like we talked about when evaluating the flight school, that individual instructor's belief in instrument training and experience in instrument training is going to say a lot. So, you know, I wouldn't be shy about asking some questions about previous experiment, experience and also their belief in um, actual or simulated instrument conditions. You know, as weather and IFR flying go hand in hand, um, you know, certainly uh, an instructor with a good background, a good solid foundation in, um, in under understanding and analyzing weather scenarios is going to be very helpful to you. And then finally, someone with a lot of enthusiasm and someone, again, that you expect um, to be working on your team. And, and equally as interested in your success as you would be. The process, I'm sure a lot of you have questions about how long does it take and how much should you invest. Well, as I mentioned before, and like anything in life, so much of this is going to be dependent upon what you are willing to invest. There are a lot of great resources and tools out there to help you in this process. We spent a lot of time talking about the video-based home study. making giving consideration to some of those initial thoughts we talk about in terms of considerations for an instrument rating. Why are you, you, know, why are you here? What are you looking to get out of it? Um, some of the other things you can do to help support the training process, in addition to the video-based home study course, um, there are online resources. You can listen to air traffic communications 
um, on great websites such as Live ATC, if uh, ATC communication is um, a source of um, you know angst for some of you. Uh, that type of resource can certainly help with that. And instrument training is certainly going to demand that you do a lot more communication with ATC than probably what you're used to. Um, so your investment in both time and money, I would say, is just a starting point because so there's so many variables. Um, you know, consider you know the time it took and the investment it took to earn a primary certificate. And in my opinion, that that will be very close. Should be very close in both time and money of what it will take to earn an instrument rating, but there's a lot of these other things you can do to affect that. And a lot of that is, uh, some of that has to do with goal setting. Um, it's important in a lot of syllabi that are available have some of these preset milestones and events. Um, so you can use that um, to complete various stages or hit various milestones, or if that's not clearly laid, laid out in the syllabus, um, you know, you can set your own. Um, your instrument training should be divided into some fairly easily identifiable modules. You're going to start out, should start out with basic instrument flying, um, graduate towards working with navigation systems, um, then into terminal operations and instrument approaches, and then into IFR cross-country type flying to kind of bring that all together. So, so focus one step at a time. Um, and accomplishing those shorter milestones um, will, will help get you to that very end goal. And then, of course, being committed and set aside, setting aside some time. Um, again, like most things that you set out to accomplish, it's about prioritizing. So, you know, it's up. I'm. I can't very easily sit here and tell you exactly how to do that. Um, I'm an advocate. And I talk to our students and clients about this all the time, about um, writing out, um, you know, keeping a journal of your progress, um, being very specific in writing out short-term goals and long-term goals, and writing out schedules and dedicating certain days and certain blocks of time when you're going to say, okay, this time on Thursday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern, I am going to focus on this module of my video home study and prepare for the next day's lesson. Things like that can definitely help. Moving on, I know uh, we're getting close to the end of our scheduled time, but staying proficient. You know, in the beginning I talked about what your goal was. Is it to earn an instrument rating or is it to be an active and engaged instrument flying pilot? And if the, if the latter is true, uh, a commitment to kind of that lifelong learning uh, principle is going to be a must. How to stay proficient. It's um, I don't have solid statistics, but I have read before that I mentioned there's over a little over 600,000 licensed pilots in the U.S., and only about half of those have an instrument rating. I've heard a number as low as 15% of those that are instrument rated actually maintain instrument proficiency. Instrument proficiency. How do you do it? How does it work? Well, Number one, something I advocate all the time is to fly in the IFR system even in visual conditions. That will keep you committed to precision flying. It will keep you talking with air traffic control, which can be a safety and enhancement. Um, even if you're not actually flying in, in actual instrument conditions, um, you will stay tuned to the IFR regulations and, again, interacting with ATC and planning flights appropriately. And you can always complete a flight even in VMC with a, with a practice instrument approach. Um, even doing so, looking out the window and under day visual conditions can be valuable learning. Hand fly. We talked about the FAA's issuance of the special um, special bulletin on the degradation of, of flying skills with too much reliance on autopilot. When at all possible and practical in a controlled environment, hand fly the airplane. You know, that's the fun part. That's why we got into this in the first place. Um, landing. Something that happens that will be inevitable is once you're away from that primary training environment, you'll spend less and less time in the traffic pattern working on those landings. Um, so you'll have to, in my opinion, set aside some specific goals and specific times to do that because a lot of your instrument practice flights, when you're out doing multiple instrument approaches over and over or even working in the IFR cross-country environment, you, the quantity, the number of landings that you're going to get in is going to be greatly reduced. 
and that will start to get noticeable. So do work in some time there. Um, you are required in terms of instrument currency and proficiency within the previous six months, if you're going to be flying IFR as the pilot in command, you do have to have completed six instrument approaches under actual or simulated conditions. And you also um, will have had to um, rehearse, practice, have logged um, navigation skills, flying, really that's any IFR flight, and also holding procedures. Um, so that's something to be very aware of and, and pay careful attention to in your logbook. If you haven't met that currency requirement within the preceding six months, the regulations do allow you an additional six months to get that currency, but you're going to have to gain that currency with a safety pilot under simulated conditions because once you, if you've gotten away from the currency, you can no longer legally act as PIC. Now, if you go beyond that additional six months or a total of 12 months, it's going to require a formal instrument proficiency check, which you have to do with a flight instructor. Now, speaking of that, um, that's not necessarily a bad thing, and that's not necessarily something that you want to avoid, even if you are instrument current. Um, part of your own personal proficiency program, which I highly recommend for all of you VFR flyers out there and potential instrument flyers. Set your own you know, personal proficiency plan. Plan every so many months to get with an instrument instructor or a safety pilot, um, if that would be your preference, and do something new or different. Try a different style approach. If you, if you have the opportunity to, if you've been working you know, solely on RNAV GPS approaches, you know, try to fly some instrument landing system ILS approaches, or if you haven't done a VOR approach in a while, or if you're a little rusty on your holding procedures. Um, do those items and elements that could pop up while rare in the course of any given instrument flight. You know, go outside that comfort zone um, as part of that proficiency program. That's what's going to ensure that you keep developing and keep growing as an instrument pilot. And finally, be extremely disciplined about your personal limitations and your personal minimums. Um, you know, all the conservative approach is 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 never wrong. So you do want to always have an out. You do want to be aware of where the good visual weather is going to be. Um, there are additional, you know, just because you have an instrument rating doesn't mean you've eliminated the risk of continued VFR flight in the instrument conditions. Um, so do be very uh, respectful of the uh, weather conditions and your own personal ability and skill and work to improve those. Okay, we're to the end and just a little over time, but I will, as promised, certainly stay on and um, answer a few questions if I could. Well, you'll have to forgive me. I'm having a little difficulty right now accessing um, the question. So I do apologize for that. It appears to be a technical glitch. Um, what I will say is um, I will leave, for those of you who can make a quick notation, um, our URL is sportiesacademy.com. Uh, you can reach us directly at fly at sportiesacademy.com and, and we will be happy, myself and our instructional staff will be happy to field some additional questions that you may have. We're always happy to talk to you about a potential uh, course of training, um, be it at our place or even some other um, facility. Uh, we, can, we can hopefully provide some guidance and insight there. If you have some specific questions of content, please send it my way. Uh, potential support products, whatever the case may be, please feel free to, to uh, send us an email. 
Uh, and again, I apologize that we weren't able to get to um, any questions this evening. Um, with that, I will conclude. We are just a little over our allotted time. Thanks very much to all of you who have stayed with us this evening. Appreciate that very much. Um, appreciate you visiting us again at sporties.com slash webinars for any future programs or content. You'll have the opportunity very shortly via email to give us some feedback here and some potential thoughts or ideas for future topics. So with that, have a great night. This recording, again, once, once again, will be available early next week at sporties.com slash webinars if you happen to miss any information tonight or just wanted to review. So thank you very much, and have a great night.